Hey, what is going on? This is Eduard Stunga from Videoplasty and welcome to another tutorial. In this video, I will show you how you can use PowerPoints to create super engaging animated videos uh, that are also called explainer videos. And you can do this yourself as soon as today. It's going to be super easy and super fun to do. And uh, the reason why we do this in PowerPoint, I want to show you that it's also possible to do this with a presentation software. And the really cool thing about PowerPoint is that it's very user friendly. And on top of that, many, many people already have it. So you don't need to buy like any extra software. And uh, many of you actually used it before. So you're quite familiar with the idea of slides, uh, slideshow, animating each element in particular and uh, things like that. So it's going to make the whole thing much easier. Now, as a personal preference, I would uh, recommend you use a video editing software because it has much more features and uh, much higher quality for the video. But, you know, if uh, that's too much for you and you don't want to spend money or you don't want to learn a video editing software, I totally understand that PowerPoint is going to work just fine. However, I want to mention that this, uh, this is not going to work on Macs for some uh, weird reason. PowerPoint on Mac is uh, is not able to export the video at the end to so export the slideshow as a video uh, with any audio so it will export the video just fine with all the animations and everything but it will have no audio which is super weird uh, if you do this on windows that's perfectly fine it's gonna work no problem at all and uh, i know it's a bit ironic because uh, i'm recording this tutorial on my mac but I've tested this on a Windows machine and it works just fine. It's just that I personally use Macs and it's much easier for me to record this on my Mac rather than do it on a stranger's computer. Uh, all right. But if you have a Mac, uh, have no worries at all because in uh, the next video, I'm going to show you how you can do the exact same thing using Keynote, which comes pre-installed with Mac, so you're covered. All right, so first of all, let's watch this quick video that I made. It's like a 20, 20 second video. It's uh, super easy and super basic because I wanted to show you, you know, uh, I wanted to show you more of the process so you can understand this on a concept level rather than uh, spend a lot of time, you know, choosing the right colors for this, you know, choosing the right font that works with my brand, making sure everything is aligned perfectly. You can do that yourself for your own videos uh, and in this video, you know, just learn the concept and then you can focus on the fine details later. All right, so let's have a quick look. This is Edward in a very generic video animation. He's working super hard to protect you from evil forces. So whenever you go online on the internet, open an email or download some files, you are protected from evil hackers that are trying to steal your information by literally phishing your username and password from your laptop. All right, that's uh, pretty cool and pretty fun. Uh, let's get started. If you're already here, I hope you already have a script, a voiceover, and I really hope you haven't skipped your storyboard step for this video. So this short video is going to have five slides. Uh, so I'm just going to create all those five slides here. And uh, what we are going to use in PowerPoint to make such a such a cool animation is we are going to use GIF files or GIF files. I never knew how to pronounce that. But anyway, so a, a GIF is basically like an animated image. Um, it's available widely and you can find a lot of them online. Uh, but if you, if you go for like high quality stock GIF files, you're going to get... Uh, you know, characters doing all sorts of actions, icons, and they all come with a transparent background and usually loopable like this. Those are from Videoplasty. We're going to get to that in a minute. And uh, you can use basically with any background. As you can see here, it's, uh, it's a black background. All right, so let's just minimize this. So we already know from our storyboard and from my own preparation before making this tutorial, uh, is what I want to use in which slide. So for the first slide is the guy waving his hand. I'm just going to use the loop version. All right, drop it there. You can also add some text if you want to. Oops. So let's just, I don't know, move it there. Delete this one. Select all of it. I'll just make it bold. 
change the font to something else. I don't know, play, play around with it. This is Edward. In the next one, the character is working really hard. And this is the GIF that I want to use. Drag and drop it here. Make it a bit bigger. I'm gonna select all of those and delete them. All right, select this and delete. So for the third slide, we wanted to make it a bit more dynamic. So we are going to use some icons. I think it was, the first one was internet. This one is a bit large, so it's gonna make it smaller because we have to fit three icons on screen. The next one was this email icon. Again, make it smaller. And then the download icon. Now, of course, I'm just doing this really quick. You wanna spend a bit more time to make sure, you know, they're all the exact same sizes, blah, 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 align perfectly like this, you know. But for this, it's just gonna work. Okay, fourth slide. Again, I'm just gonna delete all of this uh, with backspace. This one is, uh, let me see, criminal stealing password. Yeah, I think this is the one. Yeah, there you go, this is it. Uh, put it here in the middle and in the last one again select all those titles and delete them. I don't want them And use this one with a criminal phishing Phishing for your password Okay, so This already is starting to look like something uh, It's getting a bit better. Let's see. Uh, I'm not gonna spend much time on those first few slides uh, choosing a color, just gonna go with white because it works fine. Uh, but for the last two slides, I think we can use a orange background. And the way you do that is you select the slide, right click anywhere on it, hit format background, and here on the right, just let it select a solid fill. And uh, here on the drop down menu, just select whatever color works for you. In our case, we are just going go. We're just going to select the orange. All right, it's getting a bit better now. So now that we have all the designs in place, you know, you want to spend more time. Maybe you want to write, uh, you know, the icon names like internet, email, and download. Uh, you know, add some text here as well. Do what you got to do. Fill up all the slides with all the design elements that you need. Uh, now that we've done that. In our case, uh, we need to add the voiceover now. So you want, to, you want to add the voiceover to the first slide. So be sure to have the first slide selected. We're going to go through our asset files and uh, here's the voiceover. So just drag and drop it here and let go of it. There you go. This is our voiceover. And now we want to go to the playback tab and uh, Select so like display in the background. Because we want it to start automatically, we want it to hide during show, play across lights, and loop until stopped. Uh, no, actually, we, we want to have this unselected. Also, just uh, you know, to be sure, I'm just going to move it outside of the actual slide. All right, so now I think it's a good time to play this as a slideshow to see how it looks and how it feels. And uh, if you've used PowerPoint before, you know that during a slideshow, you have to move manually from one slide to the other with the keyboard buttons, just like right and left. This is Edward in a very generic video animation. He's working super hard to protect you from evil forces. So whenever you go online on the internet, open an email or download some files, you are protected from evil hackers that are trying to steal your information by literally phishing your username and password from your laptop. All right, that looks uh, pretty good, but uh, it's quite static. Even if the characters are moving, we have to add some sort of animation or transition between scenes. So let's do that. Uh, we're gonna select this first slide and uh, to add an animation, you just have to select each element that you want to animate. So we'll start with the character here on the left. Uh, we're gonna go to the animation tab on top. Uh, there are quite a few options, you know, you can uh, choose a lot of stuff. Personally, I like to go with simple, so in this case, the simple ones would be 
dissolve or fly in or appear. Uh, I'm just going to go with fly in because it's something that I use a lot in uh, our custom explainer videos as well. All right, as you can see, he is flying in from the bottom. And now I'm going to select him, go here to the animation list, select picture because that's the name of this element. We want to expand this and uh, this. All right, so property is from the bottom. I want to change that from the left because I want it to come from left to right. Uh, and I'm going to go select this one and do the exact same thing, fly in. And then now while it's selected, I want this to fly in from the right. So it's basically this is coming from the left and the text is coming from the right. And it's going to form a really nice animation. Another important thing you want to do, and uh, you know, this is going to depend on each specific slide and you know how you structured it. But uh, most of the times you will want to select the animation or the element from the animation list. And you want the animation to start not on a click. Uh, if you know, if you've used PowerPoint uh, before, you know that during slideshows, you just have to keep pressing the right arrow button to go through slides and different elements and animations that you selected. But in our case, we want those animations to both start at the same time with the slide. So what you do is you click here on start and just select with previous. And we're going to do the same for meet Edward, which is the text selected here and again with previous. Okay. Now on to the next slide. Oh, and uh, we're not going to add any end animation. You can do that if you want, if time allows, but uh, it's just a matter of taste. To be honest, I personally like to have the video, like the elements animate in, uh, you know, have the slide and the voiceover and then just abruptly end and start the next slide with a animation. So again, for this one, select it, select fly in. Uh, I don't want it from the bottom. I, oops, select this. I actually want it from the top. And again, the start, I want it to be with previous. So basically when the slide appears, this animation is going to happen as well. For the next slide, is for the next slide is going to be a bit different because we have three icons and uh, we actually want to time this perfectly with the voiceover, but we are going to have to do that manually a bit later when we rehearse the timings of each slide. So, for the first icon, however, we want to. Uh, let me just get to that in a minute. Actually, let me just add fly in to all of them from the bottom. Should be fine. Select the email, fly in. All right, select the download icon, fly in. So we have all three of them here. All right, so they're all from the bottom. I like that. But we want to have this first one, which is picture four here. We wanted to start with previous. So basically when the slide starts, this icon is going to appear as well. However, for those other two icons, we want them um, here where it says start, we want that on click because during the slideshow timing rehearsals, we are going to manually do that with the right arrow on the keyboard to be sure we got the timing right with the voiceover when it says and then email and then download or whatever it says. Okay. And uh, you, you're going to have to do this whenever you have like a specific element that you want the time to appear exactly with the voice over. So you have like uh, multiple elements in a slide like this one, it can be text or whatever, or like it can be a new character that uh, appears. So it can say like meet Edward and then uh, like five seconds after it says meet Bob and you have Bob slide in as well. Uh, you're going to select uh, the animation trigger, the start trigger, as it is here on click. Because you want to be able to control that yourself. All right. On to the next slide. Here, because we have a new background color, we can actually use a transition for the entire slide. So uh, let's just select a simple one again. I'm a really big fan of simple. It just works so well. So I'm just going to select push and so nice it's good and uh, let's see okay mm. so go back to animation because I want to animate this uh, this one as well as usual I'm just gonna use fly in 
and the start we gotta start with the previous not on click for the next slide let's do the exact same thing select the element go to animations click fly in or whatever animation you want to use i'm going to go ahead and uh, select with previous all right so <clears throat> now let's have a quick look see how that feels like um, by playing the slideshow so go to slideshow this tab right here and uh, select this button play from start and remember we are going to have to manually click next on each slide so let's have a let's have a quick look this is Edward in a very generic video animation. Click next. He's working super hard to protect you from evil forces. Again, click. So whenever you go online on the internet, click. Open an email or click. download some files. You are protected from evil hackers that are trying to steal your information Oops, that by was... literally phishing your username. All right, that was a bit fast, but um, you get the point. It's starting to feel like an animation, like the video that we want. And... Uh, then once you get all this right, you fix all the animations, maybe you realize, you know, one animation is broken, it doesn't work like you want it, or you don't want this to come in from the bottom, you want it to actually come from the top, or whatever. You have to play the slideshow a couple of times uh, to see how it feels like until you have something that you are happy with. Now, we're not going to spend too much time on that, I hope you understand the whole idea. The next step is here on the slideshow um, tab, you want to rehearse the timings because you want to tell PowerPoint how much time to spend on each slide. Uh, and you have to do this manually. You're gonna time it according to the voiceover, but you have to tell PowerPoint what to do and how long you want each slide to be on screen for and when exactly you want those icons to appear. So rehearse timings is basically like play, play from start when you play the slideshow except this time it's going to remember exactly when you press the right arrow key on the keyboard and it's going to save that information. So let's go ahead and do that. And, um, you know, it's not going to be good from the, from the first try. You might have to try a couple of times until you get a perfect timing, but that's perfectly fine. You know, take your time. This is Edward in a very generic video animation. He's working super hard to protect you from evil forces. So whenever you go online on the internet, open an email or download some files, you are protected from evil hackers that are trying to steal your information by literally phishing your username and password from your laptop. All right, when this is done, you can click the escape button or end show right here on the top left. Uh, yes, we want to save the new slide timings okay that's very good now if you want to test those slides to see the timings without any any intervention of your own and just sit back and watch uh, you, you gotta play this from start as a normal slideshow and just sit back and watch it so let's do just that this is edward in a very generic video animation he's working super hard to protect you from evil forces so whenever you go online on the internet, open an email or download some files, you are protected from... All right, let's let's uh, let's stop it there. I'm not going to watch all of it. Uh, basically, that whole thing happened without me actually going through the slides by pressing the right arrow key. As I said before, PowerPoint now knows exactly how long I want each slide to be because I rehearsed the timings here. And now that everything is good, what do you want to do? is you want to export this whole thing as a video and that's super easy to do uh, as i said in the beginning of this tutorial unfortunately it's not possible to do on a mac you cannot export the audio for some reason it's really weird but on a windows it's uh, all good so the way you do that is you go here to file and click export select the folder where you want to save it. So I'm just going to say PowerPoint, video, whatever. And for file format, I'm just going to choose MP4. You can also select MOV, whatever you want. I would go with MP4. Uh, it's going to give us, <clears throat> it's going to give us some more settings like quality and uh, resolution. Just leave it on the highest quality, which is this one with full HD resolution. Be sure you have this setting on, use recorded timings and narrations and uh, just hit export. Now, 
don't be confused, this hasn't been exactly saved, even if it looks like it. It's currently exporting the video. You can see here on the bottom right, uh, this blue bar is, uh, is loading because it's still converting the file into a video. This is going to take some time, uh, depending on your computer, maybe like a couple of minutes, who knows. Once that is done, only then you can close PowerPoint and actually check out your video. Now, as you've seen, it's super easy to do uh, and you can definitely do this yourself as soon as today. You don't need any, you know, animation experience and stuff like that. But what you do need are GIF animated files, uh, which you can find online. There are probably a couple of other websites as well. I'm not aware of them, but I do recommend you use Videoplasty. Uh, yeah, full disclosure, I own Videoplasty but I think it's a really good resource. Uh, the reason why we started Videoplasty was to create a dedicated marketplace for stock animation and GIF animation, which as far as I know is not available anywhere else. You can have a look, but uh, I don't think you'll find much. So you can go to our store, videoplasty.com, go to GIF animation. Where is it GIF animation? I have no idea, to be honest. Never knew how you can pronounce that. And uh, we have like a ton of, um, you know, animated icons in different categories you can see here on the right uh, we have like i don't know auto business computer whatever dating and we also have a lot of uh, characters we have like uh, i don't know, criminal education fitness casual guy corporate guy corporate woman medical characters and we're always adding new stuff all right so have a look, see if you like anything. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. This was Edward Stinger from Videoplasty. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, I hope you're gonna make some amazing videos. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions or just let me know your thoughts in general. Uh, if you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more. And also please check out the Videoplasty Explainer Academy because there are a ton of amazing videos and tutorials that will show you how you can make explainer videos from scratch and make them really, really good. All right, this was Edward Stinga and I'll see you soon.